today. Our lesson for today is permutations and combinations. So let's say meron tayong tatlong conquerors. Si Toussaint, si Simon, and si Napoleon. There are six different permutations ng ating tatlong conquerors. What do we mean by that? It means that we can arrange them in order, parang first, second, third, in six different ways. So one way would be unahin si Toussaint, Simon, si Napoleon. Then you have Toussaint, Napoleon, and Simon. Then si Simon naman yung mauna, Simon, Toussaint, Napoleon. Simon, Napoleon, Toussaint. And yung sa third set, si Napoleon naman yung una, Napoleon, Simon, and Toussaint. And Napoleon, Toussaint, and Simon. So, by arranging them na may first, second, third, kung meron tayong tatlong conquerors, meron tayong six arrangements. Pero, kung ang tanong sa atin or kung ka ang kailangan natin ay ilang combinations or ilang groupings na pwede natin gawin sa tatlong conquerors na yan, edi isang combination lang yung meron tayo. Yung kung hindi natin i-specify kung sino yung mauuna. So, we just have Toussaint, Simon, and Napoleon and we'll always have Toussaint, Simon, and Napoleon kung hindi natin sila kailangang i-arrange in any order. So, we need to make a distinction here sa difference ng permutation at sa combination. When we say that we have a permutation, it is a specific arrangement. But when we say we have a combination, the arrangement does not matter. Before we proceed sa pagbilang kung ilang permutations and combinations ang kaya natin gawin sa isang set of objects, i-define muna natin yung factorial kasi gagamitin natin to ng madalas dito sa lesson natin. So, ang factorial, this is the product of consecutive integers mula sa n, which should be a positive integer, pababa hanggang kay 1. Inclusive, meaning kasama si n, kasama si 1. This was called n factorial at ang pagkasulat sa kanya ay n with an exclamation mark. Before we proceed sa pag-solve, important na sabihin natin na ang zero factorial na mahirap i-explain kung bakit, no? Kasi n to 1, tapos meron kang zero na mas mababa sa 1. I-define na lang natin siya to be equal to 1. Meaning, hindi muna natin i-explain kung bakit reasonable na sabihin na zero factorial is equal to 1, basta equal muna yan sa 1. Kailangan natin siya para mag-make ng sense yung mathematical operations natin mamaya. So, when we say that we have 5 exclamation mark, we will read this as 5 factorial. And by definition, this is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and it's equal to 120. Now, let's define what a permutation is. May idea na tayo mula sa kanina, but formally, a permutation is an ordered arrangement of distinct objects. So, important yung arrangement, important yung order. For example, I have 7 different books. I want to find the number of ways to arrange my seven different books on a shelf with seven spaces or seven places for my books. The way we will look at this uh, is yung unang spot, ilang books yung pwede kong ilagay. I have seven possibilities of books na pwede kong ilagay dyan. So there are seven possible ways of putting a book in that position. Kasi may seven ako na books na available eh. Dahil binailagay na ako dyan isang libro, Ilan na lang yung natira? Anim na lang. So, for the second spot, I have six possible books na pwede kong ilagay once na fix na yung unang book dun sa unang position. So, let's put down six here. Siyempre, dun sa third position ko, so limang books na lang yung possible na mailagay sa position na yun. And so on for the remaining positions, apat na lang for the fourth position, three for the fifth, two for the sixth, and after that, isang libro na lang yung natitira. So, wala ka ng choice. Siya na yung mapupunta dun sa last position mo. So, the number of ways para mag-arrange tayo ng 7 books in 7 positions on a shelf will be the product nitong 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But that's just 7 factorial, which is equal to 5,040. So, that is our permutation. Or that is how we count the number of permutations of seven distinct objects kung i-arrange natin sila in a particular order. Now, let's say that instead of having seven spaces, meron lang tayong apat na spaces sa shelf natin. So, I have seven books. I have four spaces. We approach this na parang kanina. For the first position, we have seven books na pwedeng ilagay sa kanya. For the second position, we'll have six for the third position, we'll have 5. And for the fourth, we'll have 4. 
Then, wala tayong pakialam dun sa last remaining three kung saan sila ilalagay. So, the number of ways, no, para ma-arrange yung seven books in four spaces will just be the product of seven times six times five times four, which is 840. Ngayon, kung isipin natin kung paano natin to isulat using yung permutation notation, kasi mas maiksi yun eh, kaysa magsulat pa tayo ng 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, this is 7 factorial na tinanggal natin yung remaining na 3 times 2 times 1 or 3 factorial. So we could actually write it na 7 factorial over 3 factorial. This will allow us to continue using the factorial notation even if hindi talaga natin kailang i-multiply all the way pababa sa 1. Now let's take a look at the notations that we use for permutations. So, ginagamit natin to parang may subscript, then may capital P, then may subscript ulit. Ang basa dito ay the permutation of n things taken n at a time. So you have n distinct objects, tapos siya arrange mo silang lahat, gagamitin mo silang lahat. And we can interpret this as the total number of arrangements of n objects in n slots, gagamitin mo lahat. And this is n factorial. Kasi kunyari, you have 8 spaces since 8 times 7 times 6 and 5, all the way hanggang kay, kay 1. Now, hindi naman palaging lahat kailangan mong gamitin. Like what we saw kanina, meron tayong 4 spaces, pero may 7 books. So, we are taking the permutation of n objects, n things, pero r at a time lang. So, usually, of course, dito, r is less than n, but greater than 0. So, we could interpret this as the total number of arrangements of n objects in r slots, where r is less than n, but greater than 0. And we write this as n factorial over, well, r lang kasi yung kukunin natin mula kay n, so it will be n minus r factorial. Etong button na to, npr, you will probably see this in your scientific calculators. So pwede nyo gamitin yung formula na n factorial over n minus r quantity factorial, or pwede nyo siyang gamitin diretso sa calculator. But we need to know kung saan nang gagaling yung formula niya, kasi gagamitin pa natin siya later to expand on for, uh, on other topics. Let's take a look at some examples. So, a palindrome, it's a word that reads the same forwards and backwards. How many nine-letter palindromes you can form using only the 26 English letters? Yung assumption natin dito, hindi, hindi nila kailangan maging totoong words. Pwede lang silang arrangement of letters even if they don't mean anything. So, we could pause this and I'll give you some time to compute and then let's compare our answers. I'll start by constructing 9 blanks. On the first blank, ilang letters yung pwede natin gamitin? We have 26 letters to choose from. But since this is a palindrome, may choice ba tayo dun sa last letter kung ilang possible letters yung pwede natin gamitin? Since palindrome siya, kailangan yung last letter pareho lang dun sa first. So after you have chosen or after mo maglagay ng one letter out of 26 possibilities, isa na lang yung pwede mong ilagay dun sa last letter para maging palindrome siya. Sa second letter, ilan yung pwede natin ilagay? 25 kasi nakapili na tayo sa una? Hindi, 26 pa rin. Kasi wala naman tayong restriction eh. So pwede kang umulit ng letter. So if you choose B sa una, edi pwedeng B pa rin yung pangalawa. Having chosen a second letter, that leaves you no choice for the second to the last letter. Kung ano yung nilagay mo na second letter, yun na din yung second to the last letter mo. Let's take a look at the third letter. You have 26 possibilities kasi uh, you have the entire set of English of the English alphabet at your disposal. Then the third to the last isa lang yung pwede. Sa fourth, you have 26 choices again. Fourth to the last isa lang yung possible. And then sa middle, you have 26 possibilities pa din kasi nga wala tayong rules na limit natin yung letters. At pwede tayong makabuo ng palindrome kahit hindi siya totoong English. Word. Compute natin, this is 26 to the 5th power or 11,881,376 nine-letter palindromes. Could expand our problem a bit. So suppose yung palindrome may counting rules. Dapat daw alternating consonants and vowels starting with a consonant. So how will our problem change? First letter, 21 possibilities because we have 21 consonants. Isang possibility na lang natitira for our last letter. For the second letter, it will be 5 possibilities for the 5 vow vowels, then 1 for the second to the last letter. Then again, another 21 letters and 1 letter, 5 letters, 1 letter, and uh, 21 
consonants again for the middle letter. This is equal to 21 cubed times 5 squared, which is 231,525 such palindromes. For our next problem, we have three students from beryllium, four from lithium, and five from rubidium, and they need to be arranged in a line. Now, we have three different scenarios. How many ways can this be done if scenario one, kailangan magkakasama yung magkakaklase? For the second case, ang required lang na magkakatabi ay yung mga nasa lithium. So, pwedeng may isang tao sa beryllium, isang tao sa rubidium, then yung buong group ng lithium students, then the remaining beryllium and rubidium students, kung paano nila naka-arrange. And third, paano kung walang restrictions? Pause nyo ulit and try to answer these three problems and let's compare our answers and solutions. For the first problem, pwede natin isipin na may tatlong groups tapos kailangan silang i-arrange in a line. Kasi pwede yung beryllium muna, then lithium, then rubidium. Pwede rin lithium muna, then rubidium, then beryllium. Pwede rin rubidium, then beryllium, lithium, and so on. So how many ways can we arrange yung ating three sections in a line? So that will be three factorial ways to arrange the three sections, beryllium, lithium, and rubidium. Now within each circle, so let's start tayo sa beryllium. We have three possible ways of arranging the beryllium students in a line. Then this is another three factorial ways. Taking a look at the lithium naman as a group, we have four different ways of arranging the lithium students in a line. Then we'll have four factorial ways. And finally, sa rubidium, we have five, five students na ililinya. And that would be five factorial ways para arrange sila sa isang line. So yung total ways to arrange yung beryllium, lithium, and rubidium, plus consider natin kung ilang ways sila pwedeng i-rearrange as a section group, then we multiply all these possibilities together. Now, three factorial, yung blue, which represents the number of ways para ma-rearrange ma yung sections, kung sino yung maunang section. Yung red ng three factorial is yung arrangements ng beryllium students. Yung green na four factorial, yung arrangements ng lithium students within their group. And yung orange na 5 factorial is yung arrangements ng rubidium within their group. So this is 25,920 ways to arrange our students. Now, kung lithium lang yung required na nakagroup, yung bang number of ways natin mas konte mas madami. So if we have to be logical about it, syempre dapat mas madami kasi natanggal lang ka ng restriction eh. Kanina, kailangan magkakasama bawat section. Ngayon, lithium lang yung required na magkakasama. And let's see kung paano natin siya isusolve. First, we could treat the lithium students as one group. Consider natin sila together. So, kung i-arrange natin yung mga objects or yung mga students natin sa isang line, pwede natin siyang i-treat as one, one object or maybe one student. And try to figure out the number of ways to arrange our objects in a line. Yung students, individual objects sila. Yung lithium, will treat it as one individual object. So we'll consider our five students from rubidium, our three students from beryllium, and yung buong lithium group as our individual objects to arrange in a line. Then we'll have nine objects to arrange. Parang ganito sa figure, yung lithium, tinitreat natin siya as a single student or a single object. In this case, we'll have nine factorial ways of arranging our nine objects in a line. Now, looking within the lithium block, we'll have four possible spaces na i-arrange yung four lithium students. Within the lithium block, there are four factorial ways of arranging them. So, the total number of ways to arrange yung eight students along with the lithium block, Ko consider pa natin yung arrangement dun sa loob ng lithium block. This will be nine factorial times 4 factorial. And this will give us 8,709,120 ways to arrange yung students natin as specified sa step 2. Finally, if there are no restrictions, we're just looking at the total number of students, which is 12 students. And this is 12 factorial. And 12 factorial is just 479,000,600 ways. One more example sa permutations. Sabi natin kanina, dapat distinct yung mga objects natin. But can we apply yung logic, yung reasoning, para maghanap ng number of ways to arrange four identical red balls and three identical green balls in a line? So, arrange pa rin natin sila. May order pa rin, kaya siya permutation. Although ngayon, may konting challenge. Hindi na sila distinct. So, kailangan natin baguhin yung computation natin slide. So, pause this, try to figure it out, and see how close yung magiging answers natin. So, suppose yung balls are distinct. So, madi-differentiate natin yung apat na red ball. And there would be seven factorial ways to arrange these balls. Kasi seven balls yung meron tayo eh. Let's take a look at one particular arrangement. So, may dalawang red, dalawang green, isang red, isang green, isang red. So, isang possibility lang to dun sa lahat ng possible arrangements. And since distinct yung balls natin, pwede nating lagyan ng pangalan yung mga balls. You have the red 1, red 2, red 3, red 4. 
arranged in this way and green A, green B, green C. Another such arrangement, and I will keep no yung sequence ng colors, red, red, green, green, red, green, and red, pero iba na yung sequence ng balls. So, imbis na red 1, red 2, green A, green B, red 3, green C, and red 4, this is red 2, red 4, green C, green A, red 3, green B, and red 1. So if they're distinct, then 7 factorial ways para i-arrange sila. Now, since identical yung mga red at yung mga green, we'll have to find a way to remove yung different permutations ng mga red at different permutations ng mga green in this same arrangement na red, red, green, green, red, green, red. So how many ways can you arrange yung red balls mo pag naka-sequence sila ng ganito? So in this arrangement, the red balls can be arranged 4 factorial ways. Likewise, yung green balls natin, they can be arranged 3 factorial ways within the same arrangement na red, red, green, green, red, green, and red. So we want to remove all these ways or compress them into just one way. To compress them na yung ganyang kadami ways pag-iisahin natin, then we will just divide yung 7 factorial natin, which is yung arrangement for the distinct balls, with 4 factorial, which is yung arrangement ng distinct arrangement ng red balls na consider natin na isa lang, compress natin into 1 lang. So we'll divide it out of the 7 factorial. And we'll divide this by 3 factorial, which is the number of ways na distinct yung arrangement ng green balls. So by dividing by 4 factorial and by 3 factorial, we are removing yung distinction ng red balls from each other and yung distinction ng green balls from each other. And this will just leave us with 35 ways of arranging 4 identical red balls and 3 identical green balls. Kung familiar na tayo dun sa magiging next lesson natin, you could observe that this is actually the formula for a combination. Now, this was intended na tutuloy tayo dun sa next topic natin, which is combinations. But upon editing, it looks like nag exceed na ako dun sa length ng reasonable na video. So I'll cut it here and I'll see you sa next video lesson natin.